So far I've added a few products. We saw that there's a variety of options that you can edit for each of your products. You can of course go back to um, your products view to go back to edit each one. Uh, we have the option also to this little star. It's not obvious, but this star here is featured. Notice it seems that this is the place where you set it. Um, if you go back to your product list and turn on a product as featured, this one will be first before any of the, of the other products in the regular product list. So I'm going to turn on featured for oatmeal as an example. If I visit the site and go back to the main shop screen, oatmeal is the first one. We saw previously that oatmeal was later because alphabetically it would come later. If I set it as featured, it's featured, it looks a little different, it's first, it's at the top. Looking at cakes, it doesn't appear there because it's not that category, and looking at cookies, it uh, doesn't appear there also. So featured products appear first when they're part of the big regular uh, product catalog. In theory, you could also um, set more than one thing as a featured item. Those will also show up as featured and then they will start to to appear at the top. So if I go to shop, birthday cake featured. Well, I guess it's only it is actually only one at a time alphabetically. So I've set two things as featured and only one as was actually viewed. Birthday cake. I set the birthday cake and the oatmeal cookie as featured and only the birthday cake appeared. When I'm looking at the products here, I can also quick edit and actually, I get a lot of information that I could edit rel relatively quickly. Uh, edit will take you back to the full screen where you can edit every nuance. Quick edit is actually pretty useful in this case. I think quick edit is not useful on posts and pages, but it's pretty useful on products. Because here you can change um, what your stock is and price and all of that a little quickly, a little quicker. It uh, doesn't look as nice as the other screen, but you can do it here. Uh, so I guess Terence left for the day, but this might be the answer he was looking for. He was asking, can you show, can you not show a product until you've paid for it? Maybe related to the password here, but then you have to sell the password, I guess. So there's probably a plug-in that will help you further refine your site if you need that feature. Don't show any products until you've paid for the product. We'll look at variations later. If I had set in my settings for the store instead of alphabetical listing, if I had set it under drag and drop listing, this is where I would drag and drop. Since in my case I don't have that option, I have it to show my products alphabetically, I can't. But if I have drag and drop, I would be able to move them in the order that I want here, and they'll appear in the store that way. Your products can also have... Um, have coupons. Let's take a look at coupons for a bit. Under the left side, under Products, we'll jump to Coupons. Let's look how coupons work. This is pretty nice. So coupons are part of the art and the science and the magic of marketing, where you can persuade people to buy more, because they're going to save more. 
So under coupons, um, we have active, inactive, all. Let's explore how to uh, add a coupon. At the top there, select add coupon. Under the coupon screen, add coupon. There's a lot to fill in, but after you do it at least once, it makes sense. Coupon code. The code entered to receive the discount. So that's pretty obvious. If I create a code called save123 at the checkout, it'll ask, if you have a coupon, enter it here. So the coupon will be save123. I don't believe it's case sensitive. So capitalization and such doesn't matter, shouldn't matter. And that's what's going to let people save. Well, what is the discount? Uh, it, I, I would have liked if they reversed these. What's the discount type and then the discount? Because I might put five. Well, five what? So I would want first, well, the what is here. Fixed amount, percentage, or free shipping. So by using a coupon save123, it will automatically nullify shipping, perhaps. I can do fixed amount, which is five dollars or five percent. So save one, two, three could give me a five percent discount. The problem with coupons is how long do you need them to be active? Um, how long are you going to give away something? How long are you going to lose money, technically? So start and end. When does this start? When does it end? If date fields are empty, there will be no expiration on this coupon. So if you forget to do this, that coupon will be usable a year later, and someone can still apply it even though, oops, the sale is over. Let's say it's going gonna, it's gonna to go from May 1st to June 1st. I guess uh, May 31st, midnight. So this coupon lasts one month. Uh, if I've got some sort of date set up in the future, I can turn off that activate and it'll activate itself later. Activate coupon on creation usually is what you want. As soon as you create this coupon, make it make it work, let people use it. Use once. I always forget this one. It's either that only one person in the world can use it, or it's that that one person can only use it once. I have to look that up to see which of those two it is. And under help, video creating coupons. So you can look at that on your own. So I would leave that off. I don't remember which one it is at the moment. Use once for everyone, or one person can use it once. Five percent discount on the whole order or individual products, however you want to set that up. And then you can get fine-tuned. Five percent discount on a particular item. Item name is equal to X. So if I type there, chocolate chip cookie. Now when you're when you're applying that to a name, it is better to say something like contains. So if it's equal to, you have to type in that box exactly what the name of your product is in order for this discount to apply to it. If you create a discount for anything related to oatmeal, contains the word oatmeal, this will apply to oatmeal raisin cookies, this will apply to oatmeal butterscotch cookies, etc. Contains. The product contains that keyword. You can do categories. A product in a category of cakes. So this coupon only applies to cakes.
You have other conditions such as equal to, greater than, and such. Well, that applies when it's an item quantity or total quantity. So if you had set this to total quantity is greater than 7, you buy 7 of these and you use the coupon, you can save 15%. I'm going to add the coupon. You'll notice there I get the quick details. It's active. It expires at a certain time. I can deactivate it now. It's no longer usable. It's currently inactive. And at the top it shows how many in total I've created, how many are currently active, zero, and how many are active, one. You can always go back again and edit to change the details. So you can have as many coupons as you want. Uh, you can have as many coupons as you want here, but then it's still up to you to to promote them, to advertise them, to use them, to let people know about them. So that's where that's where a little bit of marketing comes in. Let's take a little digression to talk about marketing, marketing and marketing ideas. Uh, go ahead and do this. Open up a new web browser. Let's go to this website, brandgfx.com. It's pronounced Brand Graphics. This is one of our colleagues, one of my colleagues. They are a branding and marketing company. They've got a really cool blog here, a great article on ideas for marketing. Uh, I'll show you where that is. So let's visit the site here, brandgraphics.com and then click on the link to the blog. So when you go to that site, you can click on blog. On the right side, on the search box, search for the keyword comprehensive. So visit the blog and then search comprehensive. There's an article here, a comprehensive list for marketing ideas. Marketing is important because, let's say we're building this great site and we've got a lot of great products but no one knows about your site. So that's um, where marketing comes in to find to get people to find you to advertise. <coughs> the article that I'm looking for is the comprehensive list of ways to market your business. Go to that link and then you can read it on your own. But this is. This is, an, this is a rather advanced article in that it gives you these ideas to, to reach more of an audience. It would be the perfect article if also these were active links. You know, like, I don't know what a webinar is, I want to click, but it's not an active link. Most browsers nowadays, when you select a word, now there's a way to search, either automatically or right-click. So I don't know what a webinar is. You can select it. Right click, search, and find a definition or examples. So this article is more for you as a, as a starting point of ideas. I've got a website, I need traffic. I've got coupons, I want people to know about it. So I can look here, print advertising. You know, that's a way I can create flyers and such and put them on people's windshields. Free coupon, website on the link. I could write articles or press releases. 
I don't know how to write a press release, so look up how to write a press release. I could create advertorials. I don't know what those are personally. They sound like advertisement editorials, so I would look that up to the details. Video marketing, so that means go make YouTube videos. Create, web, uh, create uh, podcasts, so how do I make a podcast? I search how to make a podcast. So this is, this is not going to uh, teach you how to do these things, but it's going to give you ideas. Do networking, meet up with real people in the real world like in hobbies or volunteer associations. Create infographics, publish ebooks, get yourself in the hotel concierge service. That's pretty popular. All the travelers that come to a hotel, they need something to do get into their hotel system and get some free advertising, probably not free advertising, but get some advertising through the hotel systems. How do you get to this page? Because I want to take a look. Go to the blog and then you can search the term comprehensive. So these are ideas then that you can look up. Uh, there's many more, of course. That's why this actually should be called the almost comprehensive, always expanding, never complete list of ways to market your business. Because more things are going to happen, more things are going to come out and change. But I wanted to bring your attention to this article, which is a very good one, so that um, you can get that information. There's other ideas regarding marketing, PR, and all of that, SEO. There's social media. I teach these social media classes. So um, I'm just going to touch on this and mention it, that there's marketing. There's things for you to do besides the website. WordPress gives us a great way to create a website and then to add e-commerce pretty quickly, but then we still need to put the effort to get found. I'm going to wrap up in a moment because then we have one more idea to talk about uh, variations. Well, that's a bigger topic than we have time to start now, so we're going to wrap up at 9, and then when we come back on Thursday, we'll talk about variations. Once we have the experience with this plugin, then we're going to look at the comparative plugin, WooCommerce. So we can look at WooCommerce next time. Um, but uh, those are ideas then for the marketing. We've got our site. What you need to do is... Uh, do a backup of your site. Do the process again of the duplicator plugin, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up. Yes. When you design a website, I don't think such a material is going to pop up. It's going to be very much graphy, flashy. So a user is not going to our website and log on the. It's going to be some icon on the first page. The same thing that you had designed for that restaurant. The first something pop up about the those things. Couple. Those things. Because that one's a plugin. That's a plugin to make a pop up. This doesn't happen automatically. I have to look up what's the name of that plugin. But yes, you want something to appear to catch people's attention, and that's going to be a plugin. So it's by itself is very boring. <laughs> It is. This whole theme, this whole design is very boring. That's why you would want to, uh, at some point, go, go search themes and find better themes. Get better themes, better design, more functionality, more flash. Yes, it's a very basic site because it's focusing more on blogging instead of shopping. So that's why you will need to find a better theme and add more plugins for more features. So do you think anybody these days is going to design such a website? Sure. It, um, it depends on what you're trying to do and who you're trying to reach. So this design is fine for some purposes, but not a very good design for shopping. For marketing, it's out of it. For marketing, uh, even with a boring site, I think if you do other marketing, that still helps. You know, you can still convince people via marketing to do something, even if the something isn't perhaps as flashy as it could be. So marketing still has an importance. Is there any way, or is there any uh, 
program that's going to convert this basic side to very attractive side? No, it, that's not conceptually possible because what I think is attractive is something, what you think is attractive is something else, what she thinks is attractive is something else. So there's nothing that's going to guess what is attractive, what will work. It's going to be that you're going to browse the plugins, you're going to browse the themes, you're going to do market research, you're going to figure out your target audience, and you're going to figure out what works best. And it's hard. It's a long, complicated process. That's why people spend lots of money in marketing. They've spent money on the website, then they've got to spend money on marketing to get people to the website. So, something to think about. Yes? The coupons are fascinating the idea. Of where does it show? And I assume that you would promote it perhaps in your social media, on your homepage. The coupon shows after you've added the product to uh, your checkout, and then it's right there, enter coupon code. So when we're in the... When we're in the uh, checkout, that's where you enter it now. Where, how do you let people know about it? That's when the social media comes in and the marketing and the email campaigns and all of that. Yeah. Or the blog. Yes. Under the blog, I may be writing blogs and say, we've got a brand new coupon this month only. And then write it in the blog. And then uh, when the month ends, then the coupon deactivates. And you may put one on your homepage. Yeah. Again, our phone page is super boring, but we could write better things on the home page saying this month only, use our coupon code X to save. Put it in your description on it, if it was for a category type thing. Yeah. Even in the even in the tagline here and such for the time being. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, you said we, we should we can have free sh shipping and some discount. Most of the times, we have free shipping and discount. Mm -hmm. For example, Amazon. Mm -hmm. Amazon, if you're Prime, you're going to have free shipping and then you can have some discount or something. Yes. Here, we cannot do it. I think so. So you're saying you want to do free shipping plus discounts. Yes, you can. Uh, you because can. It's, it's not and, it's or. Where did you see or? Because there should be yeah. and. It, it's a, so when we open it, it's. You can choose just one item, discount or free shipping. Well, no, because we've got the we've got the discount of a coupon code that we can add plus. Oh, I, I see. What you said when we were editing the coupon. Okay, in that case, we can make more than one coupon. Oh, that's, that's Coupons. Yeah, you can make more than one coupon and, and use them. You know, one is going to be discount and one is going to be free shipping. That way you can use both. All right, everyone, so take a moment to uh, make a backup of your site via duplicator. Uh, keep that, and then we'll use it on Thursday. Then we'll talk about variations on Thursday, and then we'll eventually look at WooCommerce.